for years now, Intel has been telling me that the world's been moving towards mobility. And, and in the early days, I didn't really believe it. I remember I was at the IDF where they first put up that graph that showed, uh, you know, we're at the 50-50 point where Intel's shipping more or just as many notebook CPUs as it is desktop CPUs. Back then, I didn't really buy it because laptop hard drives sucked and CPUs and notebooks weren't that great. You know, they didn't have enough cores. They weren't fast enough. Uh, and you had all these barriers, all these limitations that just made the notebook experience not that desirable. Sure enough, over the, the coming years, things got better. We eventually got SSDs. We got technologies like Turbo Boost. Um, and, and we stopped having to make decisions between, do I need a quad core CPU or is that gonna kind of penalize me when I'm playing games and stuff? You don't have to deal with any of that anymore, right? It's all about configurable resources. Uh, and the first step of that was Turbo Boost. It, it, it really helped a lot in that regard. So all of those barriers, all those things that made notebooks so not desirable to people like me, they, they started to crumble and, and they brought us to where we are today, where, you know, me personally, I, I actually use a notebook as my desktop. I still have a gaming machine that I, I play games on, but uh, I can see a future where those two might be one and the same. And, and we're heading towards that and we're going to have a lot of interesting technologies along the way that kind of enable that future. This is the first example of that. You know, back in the day, there used to be these, these proprietary laptop docks. You don't really see them as much anymore, but they would add like a PCI slot or a printer port or something stupid like that to your, you know, kind of big clunky notebook. Over time, all of those features, um, maybe not the, the printer port, but all, all those features got integrated into your notebooks, right? And, and you didn't really need to go for expansion anymore. And you had wireless networking, so anything you needed, you could kind of grab that way. Uh, but what goes around comes around. We again find ourselves in a situation where we want things like high-speed I.O., larger displays. We want external stuff that we can kind of dock our notebook into. But the idea of the docking station, it kind of never really took off. They were super proprietary. There was no industry standard for any of them. Uh, and you never really got the kind of high performance that you needed. Uh, I mentioned this trend towards mobility and, and how it's changing things. Uh, providing high-speed I.O., that's, that's one of the things that's changing. So earlier today, uh, earlier this year, uh, Intel introduced Thunderbolt, which is a super high-speed interface. So it's uh, bi-directional, 10 gigs um, in each direction, so 20 gigabit uh, aggregate bandwidth per channel, two channels per cable, so 40 gigabits per second of aggregate data. Um, and in any one direction, that's 20 gigabits per second. And it, it does two things. It can carry DisplayPort, it can carry PCI Express. Now, why would you want DisplayPort and PCI Express in a single cable? Well, it's actually really, really simple. If you want to take a notebook and you want to connect it to a big display, well, you need a DisplayPort cable or you need something to carry video out there. Well, if you've got a space-constrained device and you want to add functionality to it and you're going to connect it to a bigger device, why not stick some of that functionality in the bigger device? And that's what PCI Express is for. Turns out that pretty much every expansion controller you could think of these days, FireWire 800, Gigabit Ethernet, uh, USB, all of that can work over PCI Express. I and mean, we've had the interface for several years now, uh, and it's kind of ubiquitous. So you could theoretically put a bunch of PCI Express controllers, like a PCI Express Gigabit Ethernet controller, FireWire controller, audio controller, what have you, in a display and send all of that data back over to your notebook, along with video, um, or vice versa, over a single cable. And, and that's really what Thunderbolt enables. And what you're looking at here is Apple's Thunderbolt display. Uh, from Apple's perspective, it's not just a monitor, it's kind of like a laptop dock meets monitor. Um, and I tend to agree with that. You know, There's no physical place to put your notebook, it's not a dock in that sense, but it allows for expansion, it enables a bunch of stuff that you couldn't do before. Um, before we get to what it can do, let's quickly go over the display. If this looks familiar to you, it, it shouldn't be that surprising. It actually is a lot like last year's 27-inch LED cinema display. So you've got an aluminum back, aluminum stand, not height adjustable. Um, you can do negative 5 to 25 degrees tilt. Uh, personally, I recommend a height adjustable desk and height adjustable chair. Uh, at least for me, that, that helps kind of uh, fight off any carpal tunnel um, from hours and days of writing. Um, but if you don't have that, uh, missing height adjustability on the, on the monitor can be an issue. Uh, it doesn't swivel or anything like that. What you see is what you get. It's a 16 by 9 display, 2560 by 1440. So higher pixel density, about 108 pixels per inch um, versus the old 30 inch panels. But compared to things like the 11 inch MacBook Air, you know, it's, it's nowhere near as dense as that. So if you have trouble on these things, you, you'll, you'll likely be okay over here. Uh, you've got an integrated FaceTime HD camera. So 1280 by 720, 
nearly identical quality to all the other FaceTime HD cameras that are in Apple's lineup. Uh, you got a microphone at the top, uh, two speakers on the bottom. They're not great, they're okay. Um, better than what you get in your laptop, but not as good as say like an external dedicated set of uh, uh, like a 2.1 or something like that. Um, the only cables going into this thing, there's a power cable that I have connected right now. Um, and coming out, coming out of it, you've got these two cables. You got MagSafe. Uh, this is Apple's kind of standard power adapter. Uh, it'll deliver up to 85 watts. Um, and you got a Thunderbolt connector. So the USB cable, that, that individual thing that was on the old 27 inch center display, that's gone. That's all carried over Thunderbolt right now. Um, along the back, you've got three USB ports. You've got a FireWire 800 port, a gigabit ethernet port, and an extra Thunderbolt port. Now, all of these ports are actually driven by PCI Express or USB controllers inside the monitor itself. There's a motherboard actually right here. So power supply over here, motherboard right here. Um, and this motherboard has all of those controllers on it. Um, it's got dedicated chips for everything. And all of those talk over PCI Express or they talk to USB, which then talks over PCI Express. And all of that's tunneled uh, to your Mac over Thunderbolt. So it's actually pretty, pretty, uh, pretty cool, pretty interesting. Um, now, what can it do? So it can really enable two things. Uh, it's a display, you know, it's an external display, it does that. Uh, if you've got a MacBook Air, 11 inch, 13 inch, it can add functionality. So to this, it'll add gigabit ethernet, firewire, technologies that have never existed on the MacBook Air because of size constraints. You know, if you put a Cat5 port on here, it's not gonna really work with the small form factor design. If you have any other Mac, now again, this only works with Thunderbolt equipped Macs, so anything from 2011, uh, minus the Mac Pro. Uh, if you've got any other Mac, it really just adds convenience. So if you've got a MacBook Pro, now you only have to connect two cables, whereas uh, me personally, I've got like seven connected to it. Uh, and that's it. It's, it's really, do you add features or do you add convenience? The convenience is kind of nice if you're constantly moving between, uh, say, work and your desk or what have you, and you've got to unplug a bunch of stuff, plug it back in. I mean, it sounds really lazy, but, but that's really the function of things like this uh, to make that easier. And like I said, with the MacBook Air, it's, it's just had functionality. So how does it work? It's actually really simple. On the MacBook Air, um, you do this kind of splayed wired thing on the Mac Pro or MacBook Pro, all of the ports that you need to access are on the same side. So you plug in MagSafe for power, plug in Thunderbolt for IO. And if we open the MacBook Air, the airs don't boot up as quickly as they used to. There we go. So we were driving this display. Now, since we have power connected, I can actually go ahead, sleep this, pull out Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. And in a second, this will actually transfer the desktop over here. There we go. And now you've got a notebook as a desktop. Um, you can go tuck this wherever you want to. Um, and you've got full access to everything on there. Performance is, reasonable to really good depending on what kind of graphics you've got. Uh, the MacBook Airs only use integrated graphics. Intel's HD graphics is much better than it ever has been, but it doesn't have a ton of memory bandwidth. You know, it's it's sharing with um, sharing with system memory. It's a decent memory bandwidth for the entire system, but it's not like super low latency to the GPU. Um, and, and definitely not the amount of bandwidth you can get out of uh, uh, some really, really high speed uh, direct attached memory that you get in like a, a discrete GPU. So some UI uh, actions and animations are actually pretty quick. Um, I was actually surprised by how quick this animation itself is. And if we, um, if we go ahead and add another desktop, just swapping between them, I, it's, it's actually not bad from driving a, a 2560 by, 16, uh, by 1440 display. There are other animations that are kind of sluggish. Um, so that animation right there, that's kind of painful. Um, and again, most of this goes away if you go to uh, a platform with a discrete GPU. But it's actually amazing for these things, right? Like you can, uh, I don't have ethernet hooked up right now, but we could actually disable wireless and, and have high, super high speed ethernet on, on this machine, something you've never really been able to do. Um, and all of the controllers in here, for the most part, they operate at full speed. So I was pushing 830 megabit over Thunderbolt to this thing off of an 11 inch MacBook Air, which is as fast as you would get, you know, if you had an integrated uh, gig e port. I was pushing over 70 megabytes per second over FireWire 800. Um, again, identical to if we had a native FireWire 800 port in this machine. Uh, the only issue is USB 2 performance, so it's not quite as fast. Um, the way USB 2 works is, uh, so you'll have like one controller and then a bunch of devices kind of fan out from that controller. Um, 
and the maximum speed is determined by the slowest device on that chain, uh, which is why you notice if you do like file copies through a USB hub, for example, they're usually not as fast as uh, if you plug in directly to your USB port. So I noticed in, in our testing, uh, you lose a few megabytes per second if you're copying to a USB thumb drive, for example. Not a huge deal. It's really only a problem for people who have USB SSDs uh, where the speed delta is about half. Um, but I suspect the majority of people will fall into kind of the USB stick crowd that won't really notice the difference. Um, but that's it, right? That's all this does. Uh, and for some people, that's exactly what you've been looking for. You've been looking for a way, especially users that had 15-inch um, MacBook Pros from like a few years ago and they upgraded to 13-inch MacBook Airs. Well, they had to make a lot of sacrifices, right? They may have lost some storage. They definitely lost things like Gig E um, or Firewire. Uh, the Thunderbolt display adds those back in, which is kind of nice. Uh, and for MacBook Pro users, it adds convenience. If you're constantly moving your, your notebook back and forth, um, this kind of deals with that. Now in my testing, I didn't really notice any issues with the display. Uh, the sound isn't great. Um, it's better than a notebook, but it's not as good, uh, as I said earlier, as like a, a 2.1, you know, a dedicated external audio solution. Um, but in terms of the display itself, it worked fine. Uh, display quality was really, really good. Uh, again, comparable to last year's 27-inch model. Uh, there is an interoperability issue right now with the Promise Pegasus and this display. It looks like the Pegasus is at fault. Um, so read the full review on anontech.com if you want details on exactly what's going on there. But it looks like we're going to have to wait for Promise to provide a solution there. Uh, but otherwise, the display is decent. Look, if you're looking for... Uh, a good external display for your MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, uh, 2011 models only, unfortunately. Um, I, I really have no problems recommending it. There are things I would like to see. Uh, I'm kind of disappointed it doesn't have an eighth inch stereo jack on the back. So you either have to buy a USB sound card or rely on the internal USB speakers for audio out, which is kind of disappointing. Um, there are only three USB ports on the back. Uh, I would appreciate more. Uh, and I really wish Apple took this opportunity to move to USB 3. Um, I'm expecting Apple to do that next year since uh, it comes integrated with all Ivy Bridge chipsets and so far uh, Apple's had no problem implementing you know, everything Intel implements in its chipsets, but uh, I feel like this would have been a good point for Apple to do that. Um, what I'm afraid will happen is you know, you'll get a Thunderbolt display next year or the year after that'll add USB 3 support and then you'll just want to upgrade to that. Um, but other than that, honestly, it's, it's a fairly well-rounded device. Um, like I said, I, I would almost call it a must-have if you've got a MacBook Air that you also use as a desktop, um, just because it adds things like Gigabit Ethernet. And if you're doing a lot of media file transfers, especially off of like a local file server, it's just so much less painful to do that over Gigi than it is over 802.11n. Um, for MacBook Pro users, it's really a convenience thing. Um, I do a lot of traveling, and there are times when I take you know the 15-inch with me, and it's just nice to only unplug two cables. Um, but that's really what you're paying for at that point. Um, and again, personally, the form factor, the 27-inch, um, 2560 by 1440, uh, I, I've always found myself to be more productive on a single high-res display. So you, you, you do get an advantage from there, you know, if you don't already have a high-res display. Uh, but that's about it. I mean, it's, it's really, really simple where we're at today. Where we can go with this technology, that's what's really interesting. So today, you know, you heard me complain a little bit about uh, GP performance on this thing when scaled up to the big screen. Uh, but what if we were to integrate, say, a high-speed GPU into a display or into an external box? And I, I really believe that's the kind of next step for this type of technology. Because uh, still, that, that's one of the biggest issues we have as notebook users is, you know, you can still get much, much better gaming performance on a, on a, desktop, um, on a desktop platform. So that could be one way of addressing that. Now, there's always the idea that as uh, APUs and integrated graphics get better, you won't really need external GPUs. Uh, but for now, I know a lot of notebook users, I know myself in particular, I would appreciate the ability to kind of, when I'm home, when I need the extra GPU power, you know, just dock into something or plug into something that gives me better GPU performance. So that, that could be a look at, at kind of where we're headed with this technology. But for now, you know, this is what it is. You get a lot of expansion built into a pretty decent display. And that is the Apple Thunderbolt display. My name is Anand Chimpy from anontech.com. If you want a full review of the Thunderbolt display, including uh, display measurements, performance tests using Thunderbolt, all of the goodies, uh, check it out at anontech.com. That's A-N-A-N-D-T-E-C-H.com. Thank you.